Hello and welcome to Firepower Device Manager's Objects, NAT, and Access Control Learning Module. This video is part of the mini-series called Cisco Firepower Device Manager. If you haven't already, please take a look at the introduction video to get an overview of what is Firepower Device Manager. It is a new web-based simplified device manager to manage Cisco's integrated next generation firewall or firepower threat defense software offering. In this session, we will look at the different objects types supported by Firepower Device Manager and NAT and unified access control policy for deploying the next generation firewall. Let's start with objects. Objects are reusable containers that define criteria that you want to use in policies or other settings. For example, network objects define host and subnet addresses. In FDM, when you update an object, all policies that use the object are automatically updated. Here is a list of different object types which Firepower Device Manager supports. It includes network, host, zones, application filters, URL, geolocation, and syslog servers. You can configure objects directly through the objects page, or you can configure them while editing policies. Either method yields the same results, a new and updated object. Next, let's talk about NAT. You can implement address translation through Firepower Device Manager in two ways, AutoNAT or Manual NAT. In AutoNAT, all at AutoNAT rules that are configured are a parameter of the network object and are considered as to be AutoNAT rules. This is a quick and easy way to simply configure NAT for a network object. You cannot create these rules for a group object, however. Manual NAT, on the other hand, lets you identify both the source and destination address in a single rule. Specifying both the source and destination addresses lets you specify that a source A, destination A can have a different translation than source A, destination B. The destination address is optional. We recommend using auto NAT unless you need the extra features that manual NAT provides. It is easier to configure auto NAT and it might be more reliable for applications such as VoIP. Next, let's talk about access control. Access policies are used to control access to network resources. The policy consists of a set of ordered rules which are evaluated from top to bottom. The rule applied to traffic is the first one where all the traffic criteria are matched. You can control access based on traditional firewall network characteristics such as the source and destination IP addresses, protocol, ports and interfaces in the form of security zones. You can also control access based on application that is being used the destination URL of a web request, including the generalized category of the URL, and also on the based on the user who's making the request or the user's group to which the user belongs. For all unencrypted traffic that you allow or the interested tab traffic that we call, you can apply an IPS inspection to check for threats and block traffic that appears to be an attack. You can also use file policies to check for prohibited files and malware. And we will talk about IPS and file policies more in the next video. Any traffic that does not match an access rule is handled by the access control default action. If you allow traffic by default, you can then apply another level of IPS inspection to the traffic. 
However, you cannot apply a file or a malware inspection on traffic that is handled by the default action. With that, let's jump into the demo. This is the topology we will be using for our demo today. In this session, we will change the default NAT and access control rules, create an object from both the object management screen as well as from within an access control rule. We will create and test an auto NAT rule to enable users to access the inside web server. And we will create and test access control rules based on URL categories and applications. During the steps above, we will also check out some of the cool features like the topology view, uh, create an object from within the policy screen, and also explore the events or the connection events that are generated because of the testing. So going back to our topology, I actually have a web server running on the Unix on the inside. So what we'll do now is for the AutoNAT testing, we want to enable users to access this web server on the inside, hosted on the inside network from the outside. Let's see what are the changes we need to make to get this going. So here's a device dashboard. Let's go ahead to policies and look at our default NAT policy. We want to edit this default NAT policy and change that from any to outside to inside to outside. So let's change the source interface from any to inside. Next, we need to add some objects. So let's an object for our inside web server, which is the host object and enter an IP address. Let's also add an object for our mapped host server which will be the translated address from the outside. Notice here we're creating the objects from the object management page. This is a random IP address on the outside, which I'm going to use to access the inside web server. Just 192.168.1.250, for example. Also notice the deploy button has an indicator that we have pending changes. Next, let's go back to policy and add an auto NAT rule. Let's create a rule for auto NAT and give it a name. Notice with auto NAT, your placement option is grayed out because it's automatically placed in the auto NAT section. It doesn't have an order to follow. Let's also change the original address, which is going to be our inside web server, and the translated address packet to be the out mapped inside web server, which is our outside address. Notice the show diagram gives you a flow of the packet from original to translated. This is a cool addition to our Firepower device manager. So we built our AutoNAT rule. Next, we want to add an access control rule to actually allow the access. So let's build an access control rule for our AutoNAT, which is basically allowing access from outside to inside web server. In the outside networks, let's pick any IPv4 and for destination network let's pick the inside web server to be specific so any access from IPv4 on the outside to inside web server should be allowed let's go ahead and deploy these changes 
Once it is deployed, we can now go to a PC on the outside in our topology. Let's go to PC3 and try to access this outs inside web server using the outside subnet. And notice how we were able to do that. Let's now add some access control rules to block based on URL categories or applications. Let's go ahead and add the rule to actually block based on URL category of gambling. The URL categories are automatically downloaded as long as you have a URL filtering license applied. In the URL categories, let's add gambling. Hit OK. Notice the order of the rules. Let's also add another rule to block PC1 specifically from accessing YouTube. And for this, let's go ahead to networks to select PC1. Notice we have objects but no PC1, but we're able to create a network object from within the access rule. So let's create a network object called PC1, which is a host object, and give it an IP address of our PC1. Now you should be able to select it from the dropdown. Let's move on to applications and search for YouTube. Applications also are downloaded in advance. Let's turn on logging. And if you also look at the show diagram, it will actually tell you what the rule is doing. So it has one network and one application on the remaining all are any. However, if you notice, we didn't change the order, so by default, it's placed at the bottom. Let's go ahead and change that order to 1. And now notice the order of the rules. In an access control policy, you want all the block rules to be on the top. Let's go ahead and deploy these changes. Once it's deployed, let's go ahead to our PC1 like before to test these changes. From PC1, we open Firefox and try to access partypoker.com. And notice how we get a block access denied page. Let's so also go to youtube.com and notice the same system generated access denied page. This is how we're going to block based on access control. Let's look at monitoring as well. By default, clicking on monitoring brings us to the system dashboard that gives us an overview of your device. In network overview, you can get more information, uh, aggregated information about what's going on on your device in terms of policies hit, web categories, top destinations, signatures, etc. We can drill down by clicking on one of these labels, for example, gambling, which would take us to the more specific dashboard, in this case, web categories. And here you can see how many times the policy was hit and other details for this particular transaction. Also, let's look into the events that were generated for this transaction in particularly the connection events. We can go ahead and filter our events um, on any of these categories. Let's try to do it on um, rule action in this case because we know that is blocked. Uh, so rule action equal to block 
and as the events start coming in for the block notice these are real-time events uh, you will see um, how PC1 and PC2 were blocked from accessing party poker while only PC1 was blocked for accessing YouTube you can get a lot more information about each of these connection events by clicking on the view detail of each of these events. Thank you for joining me today in this session for Objects, NAT and Access Control. Uh, don't forget to look at our other videos to learn more about Firepower Device Manager. Thank you again.